a big round of applause to those of you that have been following along this whole way. Don and I want to take some time to talk to you about some Cave soundtracks that were not published by Cave, but were soundtracks for games that were made by Cave. And we're going to be looking at these also in chronological order in terms of when the album was published. We're starting in September 2003 with a game called Pro Gear, which I don't know a lot about this game. Don, can you tell me a bit about it? I would say that it's kind of like a World War, like kind of inspired horizontal shooter. And I think that Akai Katana also kind of drew inspiration from this because it's kind of similar, in, but in different ways. I mean, it's just like this whole idea of like machinery kind of taking the forefront. Yeah, I see that. But, I mean, of course, look, with Akai Katana, you're a ninja. Looking at the artwork for Pro Gear, I very much get that World War vibe. It, it very much reminds me of like Valkyria Chronicles in that sort of in that art style, at least as far as the characters and, and the shades of brown goes. Now, Pro Gear was released, the soundtrack was released by Capcom in 2003. And we're listening to two songs. The first song, which was your selection, is uh, To the Blue Sky, Stage One. So Don, tell us what you think about this song and the composer and how this stacks up against a lot of the other cave music that's out there. Um, well, Pro Gear is probably one of my least favorite soundtracks, but I like the stage one because it gives that nice vibe of, you know, you just starting off on your adventure and it actually has a pretty decent melody. Some of the other stage themes I'm not the biggest fans of. Yeah, and I, I noticed the, the composer Yukinori Kikuchi, that's not a name I recognize from elsewhere in, in Cave's work. Do you know that name? I am not familiar with that name, but it may have been like a contracted composer. Because back then, they really didn't have a go-to composer. No, they did not have go-to composers. They didn't have their in-house team. They didn't have Bass Escape to turn to, at least not in a solid way yet. You know, I really like the track that I've selected, which is Stage 4, Amber Ruins. And you'll notice... Don, he chose from the original version from the soundtrack CD, he chose track 15. What you're listening to now is track 6, which is, I think, the PS2 version. So let's uh, take a listen to Amber Ruins. You know, Don, one of the things that really struck me about this song, why I chose it among the lot from the Pro Gear soundtrack, is a really effective vocal synth that you can hear there. Cave soundtracks tend to do really well when they use voice. I think they tend to use it sparingly. But to hear it done this well, this long ago, back in 2003, I think that's part of why I really uh, was drawn to this song. Any thoughts in that regard? I, I do appreciate the the use of the voice in this track, but it's one of my it's not some one of the tracks that I really enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just find the accompaniment a bit grating, but I do appreciate the industrial vibe and the the use of vocals. Kinda reminds me of Longina Cantata. Yeah. That's a good one. Like, you know, that mechanical one. Right. Yeah, the hard industrial heavy. with the opera voice, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's let's move on ahead. The next album that I know of that was formally published as a soundtrack of Cave Music, uh, but not by Cave, that took place in January 2005. This was a super sweet published album. It is the perfect remix album for Donanpachi Daiojo and Esp Galuda. So the first half of the album, you get some DDP. Second half, you get some ESP. Let's start with Don's selection. He chose Stage 2 from ESP Galuda. It's track 16 on the Super Sweet published CD. Um, why'd you pick this one? 
I just kind of really enjoy this remix, and it's from somebody that I'm not really super familiar with because I don't think he's done much aside from this. Yeah, Taka Takanori Izumi is not a name that stands out to me either. No. Yeah. Let's take some time to listen to it though. Now, one of the things that's, that's worth noting about this soundtrack, one of the things that makes it really important for collectors is that the first Escaluda really hasn't gotten any arrangements ever. You know, compared to something like Doranpachi or Mushihime-sama, which has been arranged two or three times over across the various soundtracks that have been published, the first game, that really didn't get much play outside of its OST. So this soundtrack right here is really your chance to hear something other than the OST, and I think it really is uh, an enjoyable album. Now that said, we're going to go now to the track I chose, which is the True Last Boss theme of Donanpachi Daiojo, which is a song I've been listening to in its original form quite a bit because I've been playing this game on my iPhone, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, it is kicking my butt. So uh, this is True Last Boss arranged by the one and only Takeyuki Aihara, who I think he used to be a member of Super Sweep. Is that right, Don? Um, I believe so. Um, yeah, I think at one time he technically was. Uh, at... Well, I wouldn't say Super Sweep, but he was definitely a member of the Sampling Masters, like when he was part yes. of Namco. Yes, definitely part of Sampling Masters. When I see his name, I am immediately associated with Shinji Hosoe and the whole crew. So, yeah. And you can just tell in his style. So let's take a listen to his style here, taking on the true Last Boss music right here. This is a very busy arrangement, very frantic, but as the phrase goes about busy bees, this song, especially in the Dodonpachi library, is one of the fastest and most sort of energetic and crazy songs out there. Um, so he's certainly working within the source material and not straying too terribly far from uh, how it sounds in the original version. Um, there's a, there's a lot more going on sonically, I think. There's a lot more layers, but uh, he holds the tempo, that's for sure. What do you think, Don? Yeah, yeah, this is a really good one. I like the combination of the hard electronic and then the, the rock focus. That, that still kind of speaks true to the original, as you had mentioned. Yeah, it does. And I think, really, as we've heard earlier, a lot of uh, the best tracks out of Cave do this and not that the best cave tracks only use this style but that this style uh tends to be a winner and tends yeah. to stick with us i think that's true yeah unlike some of the other arranged albums we already talked about uh i like the fact that these albums more like enhance the originals rather than transform them yeah and i think i think what ihara has done with this track and, and a lot of the tracks on this Super Sweep album. It really is one of my favorites um, because there are so many great people working here to enhance the music. Let's move ahead to not too far in the future then. In the year 2006, we're gonna take a look at two different albums published by INH, Insanity Naked Hunter. Don, help me understand who or what INH is. They release DVDs and CDs. Do they release print magazines too? I'm not quite sure about the print magazines, but yeah, most of these come with like, like Super Play DVDs. Right. So you want to see someone just totally destroy the hardest difficulty of 
uh, shooter, that's what you'll find INH publishing. And then sometimes alongside that, they'll publish a music CD to go with it. And they've probably done that for, there's probably four or five that they've done for cave games. But we've selected two here that we think were substantial enough to talk about. The first one published in February 2006 is The Secret Lover Mushihime-sama Remix Tracks. I think the first part of the disc is actually just the OST material. Yeah, that is correct. And then the last four or five tracks are the actual arrangements you get. So we're starting with Shinju Forest, um, which is one of the best known themes, I think. As far as stage one themes go, this is just, you know, it's just so good. And this is a track that Don selected. Don, do, do we know who this is arranged by? Yeah, this is arranged by Mitsuhiro Kaneda, who is still at Base Escape. All right, so we have a bass escaper here, and yeah, Kaneda, that's a name that I wish I would see more often. But let's hear, let's hear how he does with Shinju Forest. this is a really relaxing track this is like this it's got this like chill groove thing going that i know some bass escape members have always been really good at this stuff i really enjoy this one because it does take some nice liberties because he also arranged this first stage theme for the actual xbox 360 port and of course it had to be used in game so it couldn't be as i guess different it had to be it would have to fit with the frenetic action going on screen yeah and and generally hold to the tempo which that version on the special range album definitely does yeah this this one which i guess he did six years prior to the special range version he's just sort of letting it all go this is what i would imagine like if you had one of our you know western arrangers like uh mustin or josh morse take on cave this is how i imagine it would end up and uh, I mean that as a totally good thing, by the way. <laughs> I really like I'm mean, just the piano, the jazz. It's really nice. Yeah, it's a nice remix. All right, now we're going to listen to uh, track 16, Direction of the Innermost Forest, or the one who is always in the forest. This one has been translated a variety of ways. But generally, I think this is the stage four, stage five theme. Sta stage five. Stage five theme which is sort of a variation on the stage one theme, like in its original composition. Do you know what I mean, Don? Yeah, I would say that. I mean, he's done that before. Yeah. Or, or after this, technically. And the person doing the arrangement is uh, Namiki himself, who um, composed this track and the majority of Mushihime-sama. So this is a self-arrange, and I think it's up to the normal tempo, but it's still a softer track. You guys are hearing it right now and you can hear that sort of um, there's just a lot of softer pad-like sounds instead of anything too harsh. And the drum beat is a little more fleshed out I think. All right, we're going to move on real quick now to the Lunatic Ibarra remix tracks. This album only has five tracks on it. It was published in August of 2006, so just a few months after the last one we were listening to. We're going to start with track five, Endless Train, arranged by Namihei and someone else. Yeah, I think he just goes by A. A. All right, the, the letter A and Namihei. It's brought to you by Sesame Street. Sesame Street and Cave and Insanity Naked Hunter. All right, here's Endless Train.
the reason I chose this track was because it has this nice, amazing, like, rock ballad sound, which is totally different from the original track. Yeah, it's totally different from the entirety of Ibarra. I mean, Ibarra was uh, composed solely by Shinji Hosoe, so it was very much, you know, electronic, um, heavy electronic, um, whereas this is, you know, classic instrumental rock ballad with that singing uh, lead guitar part. And um, yeah, this is a really enjoyable arrangement and really unexpected. Um, I had almost forgotten about this track, and it's uh, it's different in a good way. You don't you don't find this style even among some of the uh, some of the arrange albums that are you know each track is a different arranger. Um, you don't find too much of this style, and so it was nice being able to hear it here. Now we can contrast that with the track that I selected to listen to. This is track three off of Ibarra Remix. This is Bonds of Steel, arranged by Wasi303, whom, as we've mentioned, sort of became a regular arranger with Cave. Is, do you know, is he, like, officially on Cave staff? Oh, no, no, no. He works for INH. Okay, so he's an INH guy. Uh, but yeah. he, he's, as we've seen, he's gotten a lot of work in with Cave, and... Uh, I mean, I think he's freelance, but I know he is associated with INH and g -Rev. So, Wasi 303's arrangement here, Bonds of Steel, as you're hearing, this is much more in the line of if I, if I just told you this is Shinji Hosoe, you would say, oh yeah, I can hear that, just because this is a techno-electronic style track. Um, Wasi 303's more groovy synths and styles still make their way in here. Let's... Uh, have me stop talking for a bit so you can hear it a little more clearly. this one don i really enjoy it yeah I, just, I think i think it's as simple as that yeah i mean i can't get much simpler than that but i do enjoy the piano that's used yeah yeah i think it's good all right we're gonna start this next track now because it's a long one and we're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on here the album we've selected next is an album published in April of 2010. It was published by 5PB. It's a two-disc album. And the full catalog number is FPBD-0154. Full title, it's a Ketsui album. Ketsui Kizuna Ji Go Kutachi. Hey, I got the subtitle. Extra. Limited edition bundled bonus special soundtrack. I think like every adjective ever <laughs> made it in there. They just needed to add like super and 2.0 and we would have been there. But basically this is, a lot of people refer to this as sort of the definitive Katsui album. And that's because it has, I, I think it has a fuller OST than the old 2003 album. Is that right? Um, I would say it's probably because these are the remixes that were used in the uh, Xbox 360 versions of both Dononpachi and Ketsui. Or Diojo. Right. DP, DOJ, and then Ketsui. And it's arranged by various members of Base Escape. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that album from 2003, but now instead of being a single disc, it's a double disc, and it's a, a fully uh, remixed album. It's kind of surprising that Cave didn't publish this themselves. Uh, oh, I, I, well, I think 5PB was even responsible for actually, like, porting the game, so... Oh, it was 5PB's publication of the game. That would explain why... Yeah, so and was it had so many bugs. In, was so... this soundtrack a pack-in with the game? Yes, the soundtrack came with Hence the game. The, the bundle in there. Bundled yes. bundle. And this particular arrangement is by Noriyuki Kamikura. It's been confirmed. Most of the stuff isn't confirmed, but... Some have confirmed a couple tracks through various interviews. And can you uh, tell us where we could find one of those interviews? Um, I know it was on VGMDB, like in the discussion. 
So um, this this was a was this a Japanese language interview? Yes, it was a Japanese language interview for Shooting Game Side was the magazine, I believe. And then in that interview, Kamikura says that he wrote the song where the melodies and tempos would evolve as the stage progressed. So that's that was his whole, I guess, idea for this. Which you can definitely hear. Yeah, absolutely. And this is disc two, track eight, mixed melody stage four. We're going to take some more time to listen to it because it is just so good. And I think they should get to hear the amazing, like, climax right before the loop. That, that set of solos is just ridiculous. guitar solo is pretty beast and Kamikura who has gone on to start working with Falcom a lot has certainly shown that he knows his way around an electric guitar I kind of wish we could uh, see more Kamikura with Cave maybe we will I don't know we'll see what happens on that May 2013 release for Dodon Pachi Maximum yeah. my guess is that it's probably just the people who are going to be arranging that one are Kaneda, Chiba and Kudo but that's just a guess yeah, similar to the lineup I don't have insider uh, info. on Mushihime-sama. As, like, as much as I would like to have insider info, I don't. <laughs> this time. This time, Kotowski. This time. All right, the next one we're going to listen to is the name entry track, A Sad Dream. I have no idea who from Base Escape arranged this one, but... Uh... I, and I can't answer that question for you either. I know that for this... Chiba did the stage five and the ending theme arrangements, so I mean, I guess maybe it might not be too far off to suggest that perhaps she did this one, but it's not confirmed, so. Yeah, I really like the style of this one. It's, an, it's a real nice, calming track after all the intensity of the rest of the album. It really is a nice, soothing, dessert kind of piece for me. on while we listen to the rest of this track we've looked back over 40 some cave albums and we're coming up on our last one this was the most recently published album until the future happens and we get to the the Don Apache Maximum 360 arrangements but this album despite being the newest album published goes back to caves roots yeah all the stuff that's on the soundtrack had been published before by like Cytron but have fun paying two hundred dollars if you can find that Cytron release. Well, yeah, those yeah, yeah. Cytron releases actually, right? It, you need two different discs to get it all, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So and then you'll and then even then you'll have like duplicates of certain soundtracks. Right. So you pay out the wazoo for these old releases. They were late '90s releases. This, of course, is Don Pachi, Dodon Pachi, and Dodon Pachi Two. This set of music. It was compiled and essentially reprinted by our good friends at Super Sweep. The catalog number is SRIN1107. This happened in uh, November of 2012. So you're getting some really old cave music. And what we find out is that um, even back in the day, they really had something good going. 
So let's start with the track that Don selected. He chose the stage 1 and 4 BGM. That's disc 1, track 16 from Doron Pachi. Talk to me about it, Don. Well, out of the three soundtracks, I think that the Don, pa the Don Pachi soundtrack is by far the best. Um, I'm not a big fan of Don Pachi too much. The orchestra sound, I mean, I guess it was the start of the series, so they weren't quite sure what direction they were wanting to go. Yeah. And then with Don Pachi 2, I didn't. I don't really like a lot of the tracks there either with the more techno focus, huh. which, which did become more of, I guess, the staple sound for the series, which is fine, because I think it's much better composed now. But, but I really like this one because there's wailing guitars and there's just everything you know that industrial sound with the wailing guitar just really gets you right in the action yeah let's take some time to hear those wailing guitars Now that's that's definitely some good stuff, and I would highly recommend people who really want to get a piece of cave history go out and get this double disc set. And while I agree with Don about the fact that Don Pachi really isn't a fantastic soundtrack, it's probably one of the weaker soundtracks in all of Cave's repertoire of all games they've ever made. Uh, you know, I'm not too impressed with Don Pachi. I think, however, I do enjoy Doron Pachi too. It may not be quite as good as uh, Doron Pachi, but you know, I'd like to see some some arranged albums uh, for Doron Pachi too. I think you could do some interesting stuff with it. As long as you don't choose the Stage Three boss, because Nobu Uematsu already uh, arranged that one originally. Really? Yeah. If you uh, didn't you notice it's Final Fantasy IX's normal battle theme that's one? That's right. Almost that's no right. Promo. That's a. Uh... That's an important piece of trivia, that's right. We just said it was the boss three. Stage three boss. Yeah, that's correct. But when did Final Fantasy IX come out? Uh, afterwards. Dodon Pachi right. 2 came out in like 99, and Final no, Fantasy IX no. came out in 2000. 2001 was when Dodon Pachi 2 came out. Wait, really? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure they got it. Oh, so it's the other Final way Fantasy. around, okay. Yeah. Alright, so they took it from 9. Got it. I mean, it's, it's note for note. It's, it's, it's crazy. Very interesting. Um, the track I've chosen to listen to and you've been hearing it is Deep Fear. That's uh, disc 2, track 33, Dodon Pachi 2. Let's take some time to really focus in on it. This is from the remastered CD, correct? Right. Disc two is the is the remastered disc, whereas disc one is um, original. Or is it the other way around? I think it's that way is correct. The yeah. first one. Yep. All right. Well, that brings us to a complete close. This is uh, everything we have to say about cave music. Uh, between this video and the writings that you'll find on SEMO, uh, Don's excellent body of work, which we've referenced uh, multiple times going throughout, and not just Don, but other writers um, at SEMO. There's there's plenty of great stuff out there. Um, and um, I've said it elsewhere, but a message to Cave, you know, you guys need to get this stuff out on iTunes. Uh, it's great that you guys have the games out on iOS. Get the music out there. People are going to buy it. Um, if you can't distribute it at all physically, you know, that's fine. I like having a physical artifact. I think everyone who's really into music, you know, likes collecting, but... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really upset that maybe, who knows, maybe if for this map story we might have, it might happen, but, and I'm hopeful, but I'm not optimistic, but for the ESP Galuda 2, that's how I pronounce it, um, 
the the the, the iOS music is by X Square, you know, Kanichiro Fukui. Yeah, Fukui. And and three of composers that I guess three younger composers that he worked with, maybe from when he started teaching. Who knows? But that never saw a release, and it's pretty good from what I've heard. So I'm hoping that maybe there might be a soundtrack eventually. All right, you hear that, Cave? We want you to keep publishing music, but I think there are a lot of fans out there, and we're hoping that this helps uh, bring some of them together and talk about your favorites and least favorites. Feel free to use in the comments of this video, talking specifically about the music not published by Cave, but is Cave Soundtracks. What did we miss? What did you like? What were some of the tracks that we didn't listen to that you think are great and why? Um, you can even leave a video response. We want to hear from you. So uh, thanks for tuning in and keep rocking those shmups. How about it, Don? Yeah. Keep rocking. As Namiki says, you know, live the fly and shoot to live. Or vice versa. I'm not quite sure which order it is offhand, but that's, that's a motto of his. Shoot to fly. Shoot to live. Fly to live. Live to fly. Fly to shoot. It's, it's one of those. I... I know that all of those sound great to me. I'm going to do all of those things, actually, Don. Yeah, it's, it's fly to live and shoot them all. I'm sorry. Fly to live fly and to shoot live them all. Shoot them all. Man. All right. Well, in the wise words of Nami Ki, we, we leave you with that. And thank you so much, Don, for all your time on this. All right. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs>